Why would anyone ever give up their freedom in favor of having a master? Because aspiring tyrants are very good at deceiving people into thinking that it's for their own good. It's a tragedy that this ever works, since it's just like a slave master convincing a slave that the very purpose of the institution of slavery is to serve the slaves. How on earth could anybody ever make such a ridiculous lie seem believable? One very popular means of deception, used in effort to justify tyranny, is to talk in really big terms, on a scale that most people can't imagine. The aspiring tyrant needs to use problems, real or made up, to make normal people think that normal people can't possibly solve them. Compare and contrast the following. Scenario 1. In a town with a few hundred people, a man stands up and says, There's a family in our town, and they're down on their luck. Good people, but they could use a helping hand. So vote me to be the mayor, and I'll tax all of you and give it to the poor family. Scenario 2. In a country with a few hundred million people, a man stands up and says, There are families in our country, and they're down on their luck. They're good people, but they could use a helping hand. So vote me to become president, and I'll tax all of you and give it to the poor families. The only difference between the two scenarios is scale. In the little town, no one would fall for this aspiring tyrant's trap. They'd say, well, we know the family. We'll just chip in and help them out. We don't need a mayor or a new tax or any government program. But when the exact same idea is done on a huge scale, millions of people fall for it. Because helping that many people, millions instead of just one family, seems beyond the capability of normal people. Of course, it only seems this way. Hundreds of millions of normal people can help out millions of poor people. Just as hundreds of people in a one town can help out a few people in that town. But when giant statistics are thrown around, it creates a hopeless picture to many average people who think, well, I could picture helping out one or two people, but I can't help a million poor people. Of course, no one person has to. People in your town help the poor people there, and the next town will do the same, and so on. Everyone gets help, not from some centralized authoritarian monstrosity, but by lots and lots of people exercising little bits of compassion and charity, which adds up to a huge amount. The template used by tyranny apologists is very predictable. This problem is so huge that normal people can't possibly fix it. So we need government to save the day. The politicians always say it, and it's always a lie. After all, normal people are exactly what funds this government anyway. If the people can't afford to do something, then they certainly can't afford the bloated, top-heavy, bureaucracy-laden version of the same something. The state isn't the tooth fairy, it can't make wealth magically appear. It takes it from normal people. So to say that people can't possibly afford to help the poor, but can afford to pay taxes to help the poor in addition to paying for bureaucrats, tax collectors, and politicians, it's just mathematical stupidity. And the politicians use the same deceptive template for many other things than just the poor. Normal people can't possibly pay for millions of old people to have money when they retire. Normal people can't possibly build roads. Normal people can't possibly pay to educate everyone's kids, and so on and so on. Each version of this lie can be specifically rebutted, but for this article, we'll specifically address one more. Normal people can't possibly defend themselves against an invading army. And once again, this lie depends entirely on the scale of the matter of confusing and scaring people. After all, if the Chinese army shows up at your front door, could you fend them off? Well, of course not. So doesn't that prove that we need government to come save the day? No. Again, just like with the helping the poor scenario, when you divide the big picture up into lots and lots of little pieces, it stops being scary. For example, if you live in a town with 300, 
and three Chinese soldiers show up to take over the town. Yes, three, as in one, two, three. Would you be able to resist them? Well, yeah, easily. If you're a statistically average town, there will not only be a hundred armed residents in your town, but they will on average own three guns each, and they would probably be more than happy to loan a gun to each of the 200 residents in your town who don't have one. Yes, there are actually that many guns per person in the United States. So now you have 300 armed people in your town against three Chinese soldiers. And that's if the biggest military in the world completely evacuated its own country just to come halfway across the world to evade the United States. Of course, the logistics of this happening is zero. The amount of wealth and resources required to ship 3 million Chinese soldiers over here, even if no one lifted their arm to resist them, would be enormous. And of course, people would lift their fingers to resist them, trigger fingers in particular. So could you and 300 of your fellow Americans fight off three Chinese soldiers? I'm sure that a few hundred people I know could do it. In fact, you can give these three invaders a tank, a dozen grenades, and three machine guns, and they'd still lose. No, the Chinese army doesn't have a million tanks, they only have about 10,000, but we'll pretend just to give them a better chance. So that's a worst than worst case scenario. If the biggest military on the planet pulls off a dozen miracles and gets their entire army here, if we had no military at all, no planes, no tanks, no battleships, not even a prepared or trained private militia, and in that worst than worst case scenario, the invaders wouldn't have a prayer in hell of conquering this place. So now are you scared of a foreign invasion? Now do you think it's some horrible threat that normal people couldn't possibly handle? I don't. It's just another lie that politicians use to scare you into giving away your freedom in exchange for the enslavement they call security. Right now there's only one gang and only one capable of occupying and oppressing this land. It's not because of their manpower or firepower. It's because they are the gang that the American people think have the right to rob and control us. This gang is called the United States government. In other words, the one gang capable of extorting and oppressing the American people is the gang which gullible Americans keep voting for, to protect themselves against all the gangs who pose no threat to our freedom at all.